In this video, I'm gonna be doubling the power of my 50cc scooter, and I'll show you how I did it every step of the way. Now you may be wondering, why more power? Low CC two-stroke scooters are some of the most nimble and lightweight bikes you can get your hands on. But unfortunately, they all suffer from the same problem. They're slow. Now don't get me wrong, these bikes offer quick acceleration off the line, but their top speeds often resemble that of a school zone, which honestly makes them dangerous to take on most roads. So today, I want to fix that. I'm going to be modifying, upgrading, and installing the necessary components to make my scooter more capable and powerful than I could have ever imagined. So let's go back to the beginning. This scooter's been stocked the entire time I've owned it, and it's ran really great, until recently. <laughs> This time it's gonna start for me. See, this is normally what happens, right? But then it'll die, watch. No. Guarantee you it won't start again. Battery's dying, all that. Turn her off. So the bike's been having this problem for a while now, where it'll start up, run for a couple of seconds, but then it'll die and it won't start again. And as this issue is most likely due to a small fuel delivery problem, like a dirty carburetor, your average mechanic would roll this bike into the shop and have it running like new again in 30 minutes. But I'm not your average mechanic. So instead, I ordered a box full of $675 worth of amazing scooter parts to hopefully double the power of this Honda Elite. I'm pretty sure this is an exhaust, a top boy. And we got the goodies in there. Pull this down. I'm not even a scooter guy, so I really don't know what all this is. This is a 70cc kit, and then right here, it looks like we have a var variator bell, a clutch bell, something like that, and we have a Polini variator, and then it looks like we got some sort of gear, primary gear thing, I don't know, belt, we got jets. This is like a spring thingy for something, more springy thingies for something. I'm guessing for this, this has gotta be like the clutch, right? Looks like we got some shims right here. We're gonna be running a Melosi 70cc kit. Basically, I asked my friend on Instagram who knows a lot more about scooters than I do to kind of hook me up with what he thought was good and this is what we ended up with so so here we were back again ready for another build but this time on a type of bike I have never worked on before that being said I have worked on my fair share of motorcycles and I've been told that scooters are some of the easiest to work on so I began tearing into this bike with confidence that I had the skills to get the job done. But in typical two-stroke J fashion, it didn't take me long to realize I wouldn't be able to do it without some help. So there I was, standing over a partially deconstructed scooter staring like a deer caught in headlights. And this is when I had to face reality. I do not know what I'm looking at. But luckily, someone else did. I'm Batman. See, earlier in the day, when I was feeling more ambitious about this project, I posted this Instagram story. And just as I had lost motivation and was about to give up, my good friend Toaster SSO responded. Toaster was one of the first guys I saw doing wheelies on a 50cc scooter. He's the guy that made me want to buy one of my own, and he's the guy that put together the upgrade package that I'm installing in this video. So yeah, he's sort of an OG. And to my luck, we DM'd back and forth the rest of the night and he gave me step-by-step -step instructions on how to install every part of this build. And he assured me if I follow every single step, then this bike will run and ride great with no additional tuning needed. So with all that being said, I returned to the garage with confidence that I now had the knowledge I needed to finish this build. And I was going to follow these directions word for word. Now that I had an idea of what needed to be done, the first step was to tear the bike down and clean it as much as possible. That way I could start the build with a clean slate. With the plastic shrouds already removed, I could now remove the carburetor along with the CVT cover and all of the internals.
The scooter's also getting a new performance exhaust, so I went ahead and removed the stock one. Well, this is where things get confusing for me because this is the entire transmission of the bike. And I don't know how this thing works. It's a CVT system, whatever that means. So I'm just gonna try and take it apart and see what happens, I guess. <laughs> I don't even know how it's supposed to come off. Hopefully these are on normal thread. Let's see. Going straight for the impact is never a good sign. Mmm, look at that. The whole thing just comes out as one. Wow, fancy stuff. Okay, <laughs> I'm disassembling just completely, ooh, completely not knowing what I'm doing right here. I think those are the weights. We need those. Okay, it's the crankshaft right there. And this looks like starter gear, something like that. That goes like that, that goes like that. That goes like that. Such a cool little feat of engineering right here. Look at that, wow. Who designed that, man? That is so cool. Love to see it. All right, CVT side, done. With everything now removed from the engine, I could really see how badly this thing needed a wash. And being that I was following Toaster's advice word for word, he recommended a degreaser from Walmart, so guess where I went? Oh, it's lovely, in it? That's definitely way better, I must say. Did the plugs work? I don't know. I think so. That's gotta keep it dry in there. Glorified razor scooter right now. Oh, geez. Let's go. Deep gravel. Hell yeah. Whoa. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> yeah. Now that the bike was clean, I needed to get access to the top end of the motor, so I removed anything else that was in the way. I took this opportunity with everything removed from the engine to clean up the cases as much as I could. We're as clean as I'm gonna get this motor. This is sort of like a dirty rebuild here. But the first thing I wanna do is take off this top end right here and replace it with the one in this box. Boom. What we're dealing with here is a Melosi engine and special part made in Italy. This is a Melosi 70cc cylinder for the Honda Elite AF16 engine. Got a head right here, two exhaust studs, cylinder itself. Fire, dude, fire. Wrist pin, circlips, and the gasket kit right there. Dang. Too bad mine doesn't look like that, huh? I think we're gonna start by pulling off the head right here, getting this cylinder off and seeing what's underneath, and then get that new cylinder put on here. Now luckily, disassembling this two-stroke top end is exactly the same as any dirt bike or moped I've done before, so I was fairly confident going into this. And not even 10 minutes later, the top end was disassembled and I was ready to throw on the shiny new Melosi components. But first, I wanted to make sure that this old gasket material was scraped completely off the case, that way the new top end would have a nice tight seal. And next, I installed the exhaust studs into the new Melosi cylinder.
One of the most important parts of installing a two-stroke top end is making sure that everything is thoroughly lubed with two-stroke oil before you put it back together. Next I was installing the piston rings, and apparently these come pre-gapped from Melosi, so you don't need to sand the gap to the correct size or anything like that. They're just ready to throw in the bike. Now I'm screwed. Oh, my legendary eyesight, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh, that could have been bad. <laughs> Oh, finally. I opened up the gaskets and used some Honda Bond on the base gasket to make sure there was an airtight seal. And after that, I was ready to install the piston into the bike and put the cylinder back on. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Piston in. Look at that, new Melosi top end. In there like swimwear, baby. Now while I had the rear wheel off, Toaster suggested to disassemble the brakes completely to make sure that everything was fully lubricated. That way, I could be sure that the brakes were performing as they should. With the brakes disassembled, I used some anti-seize lubricant on the cam pivot for the drum brakes to make sure they wouldn't stick. I'm not sure how effective this is, but I used some sandpaper on the drum pads themselves to get rid of any of the glazing that may have happened from them overheating over time. I also used the sandpaper on the interior of the wheel because they were pretty rusty and looked like they could use some help. That's definitely better. Got rid of all the rust. Should clean these things while I got them off. I definitely think the drum brake pivot was moving way easier now, so disassembling them was probably for the best. Brakes. Check. I think this guy can go back on here now. So far we got the top end in, rear wheel is on, the brakes are situated. That rear brake does feel pretty good, I can't lie. Now I guess we got exhaust, then we got the CVT stuff on the other side, all the stuff in this box here. After that, it's gonna be smooth sailing. Put all the plastics back on it and we'll be in the streets. It was now the third day working on this scooter and today was gonna be an interesting one because I'm installing the CVT components, which is something I've never done before. The first thing I wanted to do was change the clutch spring, which is behind here, this little spring in here. There should be new clutch springs, a new clutch, and a new spring right here, a contra spring. But I need to take this apart first, and in order to do that, you need to take this big nut off the top. I went and bought this, which is a 1 and 11 16 inches, because America's a little bit slow when it comes to measuring. And it's definitely not the right size, and what it turns out is, I thought this was 42 millimeters, it's actually 39 millimeters. So I need to go drive pretty much an hour to to get a 39 millimeter socket, to take this off, to put this stuff on, to get it on the scooter. They will never understand on YouTube why it takes so long to make these videos. This is why. If you look no seems fit, you don't back down. 39. On the road again. Back with a 39 millimeter, and that fits just swimmingly on here. All I know is that this is pressurized by that spring right there. So you wanna make sure that you push down on this with something people say they normally use their feet and then you loosen it, which is gonna be difficult. No, this is so stupid. My calves are burning right now. Bruh, 
I think I'm just rounding this out. You freaking serious, man? The tapered edge of the socket was causing it to slip off, so we ended up grinding it flat so it would fit better. And I also borrowed a larger impact because the hammer method was definitely not cutting it. We trimmed this down so now it's flat. Definitely fits on there a lot better. Gonna go ahead, get the big gun, try and get this off of here. Oh gosh, here we go. There we go. So inside of here, we got the spring, the clutch itself, and this thing. Well, I don't know what this is. So this new Melosi clutch comes stock with these white springs in it, but the kit comes with these yellow springs, which I think make the clutch a little bit stiffer. Try and clean this thing out. Super dirty. Oh, look at that. Get up out of there. I'm guessing we need this plastic piece in here. So it goes this thing, this thing, this thing. Push it down, get my feet on there, start this nut. There we go, boom. Boom, clutch back together. We got the yellow clutch springs and the yellow contra spring in there, so. Should be good to bolt on, let's go. I don't know exactly what this is. So next, I unbox the Polini clutch bell and variator. So the Polini variator kit comes with two different weights, a 6.9 gram weight and a 5.6 gram weight. So it goes 6.9, 5.6. Toaster told me that you can just alternate these and use one and then the other back and forth, so that's what I did. Everything was prepared now and ready to be put back in the bike, so I installed the clutch and the new clutch bell. Next was a new Melosi belt and then the Polini variator and new drive face. These shims were also included for the variator and they come in three different thicknesses. You need to use one of the thickest ones and one of the medium ones in between the drive face and the variator to get the correct spacing. The CVT was now fully installed and I was ready for the next stage of the build. I started by cleaning up the plastic covers that cover the engine and cylinder. And with this new Melosi kit, I actually needed to cut a new hole in this to fit the spark plug. I started day four by disassembling the carburetor and installing a new main jet. And yeah, let's not forget when we're working on these bikes that this is from 1995 and this carb has probably never been cleaned. So you're gonna wanna make sure to do that while you have it apart. Use the 86 main jet in the Naruku kit. Got it. Naruku jet kit. With the new jet installed and the carb completely clean, it was time to throw it back on the bike. To accommodate for the larger main jet, the airbox needed some slight modifications, but first, I wanted to clean it up. 
So the way that these go together, when they're together, basically the intake comes through here, through the filter, then flows into the carb. But this little intake here, there's like one pathway in through here, and then the other one's blocked. So you can see one's open right here, the other one's blocked, and you're supposed to be able to punch this one out, I guess, in order to free up more airflow. So I'm gonna try and do that. I don't know how hard that's gonna be. Get a little hammer. starting to come out. This doesn't look scientific at all, but just trying to open up this airway here. Sometimes you must destroy to make things better. Boom. Look at that. And now as you can see, there's two holes flowing through there instead of just one. Double the airflow. Epic. With the airbox now cleaned and modified, it was time to throw it back on the bike. And obviously, I wanted to clean up the covers for the transmission before I installed it. And now it's time for one of my favorite parts of the build, the exhaust. Yo, those welds are sick. Dang, this thing is fire. And now, with everything put back together, it's finally time for the first start. Oh, that sounds so good. Bro, that throttle response so much better than it was before already. Oh my gosh, guys. Whoa, it takes off. What? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't even ride it like this. <laughs> That's insane. It seriously accelerates like three times faster than it used to. That's impressive, man. Wow, that, that blew me away, man. I literally just slapped a 70 kit on this thing. That's all I did and some CVT work. Dude, scooters are sick. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't wait. We need to get the seat on here, take this thing for a spin. And before finally installing the plastics, I decided to clean everything up as best as I could before installing it back on the bike so we would start fresh. I just realized I forgot to put the tail light on. <laughs> I was like, why does it look so empty back here? Literally no tail light on it. Okay, gotta do that. I wanted to bring it out to the lot though to uh, open it up on a longer path because it's got so much torque now. It literally power wheelies like right here. I used to have to throw my whole body into it, right? <laughs> now I was completely still right there and it power wheelies. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. Like. That's hard to describe. I can't believe this is the stock carburetor and it makes this much power. 
That's insane, dude. It literally used to top out at like 25. It, it would go 30 downhill maybe, but pretty much like 25 is what you're getting. So I don't know what, what this is about to get here, but. Let's see. Oh my. Dude. We're still pulling. Oh my God. Oh my. <laughs> Dude, I was still accelerating at the end of the lot. Whoa, I topped out at 35, like three fourths of the way down the lot. I had to be going like almost 50 right there. That's crazy. It, it went to like 35 and as it hit 35, you could feel it almost shift into a second gear. Like the CVT, the way it works, you get up to a certain RPM and it just grips even harder, pulls you even more. That was wild. Oh my gosh, this thing's sick. Dude, it's way, it's way faster than I thought it would be. That's actually ridiculous. It's, oh my gosh, I, I don't know, I'm lost for words. All these mods cost $675, guys. This bike, I bought it for $700. I put $675 of mods into it. And I feel like I could take this thing on the freaking highway. Woo, dude. Oh, this is sick. Oh my gosh. I, I feel like I'm cruising like, oh, a 40 mile an hour wheelie or something. This doesn't feel like it should be, oh my gosh, dude. That doesn't feel like that should be allowed. It's so smooth. You're going like 45 miles an hour and a blip of the throttle pulls you through a wheelie, dude. Oh my, that's incredible. Guys, the last video that I mentioned this scooter in, by the way, got tons of views. Literally my most viewed video on the channel. Me just like saying how much I love this scooter and it was in its stock form. In that whole video, I'm doing wheelies at like 10 to 15 miles an hour. And now I'm on the same bike, $600 worth of parts. And that's all it took. And I'm doing wheelies at 45 miles an hour. I need to get the GPS on this thing because <laughs> it's fun. It's so wild. I'm literally swearing. I don't swear in my videos ever, and I know not to swear. This thing is making me swear. It's like deleting my filter. Oh my. That is so wild, dude. I thought I liked this thing before. Holy crap, I like it 10 times more now. We're gonna test the street ability of this scooter today. I haven't ridden it on the street yet. I only went to the lot for like an hour or so, break it in a little bit. And we're with a big bike pack too, so. <laughs> this little 50cc converted to 70 in a big bike pack. Definitely feels a little out of place. I don't know how the top speed's gonna be keeping up with these guys, but we'll find out. Alright, can I pull it up here? I really doubt it. Dude, we're going like 35. I don't know what we're going. We're pinned at 35. Whatever that is. That's not too bad. Dude, you really just gotta give it the smoothest amount of throttle. You're wheeling with the big boys. Look at this. I got 450s, 500s all around me. <laughs> Hot boys. Oh my gosh, this is incredible, guys. Yeah. Here we go, here we go. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> Yo. I don't think I have any problem keeping up with the pack. This whole time, I've been in front of everybody. This is just like so good, guys. I can't recommend this build enough. Honda Elite 50, 600 something dollars of parts in it. And the thing is just like one of the most solid bikes I've ever ridden. It feels so good through and through. Once again, mind blown. Street test, passed it by far. Flying colors. This thing is just incredible. Woo! Nighttime vibes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Woo! 
Woo! Yes! Oh, I love it. Scoot Central, baby. Now all I need is all my friends to get scooters, build them up the same exact way, and have an absolute squadron patrolling the city. 